Welcome back to the Magic City at the Birmingham Zoo, my friends. The wilds of Africa are behind us, and now we will travel to the Alabama Wilds. This exhibit opened along with the Children's Zoo in 2005. It is one of the least visited areas of the zoo. However, it showcases a very diverse group of species from the wetlands, forests, and even the farmlands of Alabama. Before we begin, please hit that like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell for notifications. Just past the carousel is the gateway to the backwoods of the Birmingham Zoo. You may actually hear the first animal before you see it. This is the home of the Golden Eagle, whose vocalizations are playing right now. This exhibit is home to one golden eagle named Zeagol, who was rescued after suffering an injury that caused his wing bones to fuse together, rendering him flightless. Golden eagles are one of the most widely distributed species of eagle, and one of the best known birds of prey in the northern hemisphere. Golden eagles can fly at great speeds, topping up at 200 miles an hour. Just across from the eagles are the sandhill cranes. Sandhill cranes are social birds that live in a family group similar to humans. Boardwalk takes you from the forest to the wetlands and the home of the North American River Otter. The Birmingham Zoo is home to two river otters, a female named Lenora and a male named Slim. This aquatic relative of the weasel is known for their streamlined body and muscular tail, which makes up nearly half of their total length for their body. Although typically very social animals, female otters make the males leave their den until they give birth in the spring. This is one of the three separate exhibits showcasing the river otter at the Birmingham Zoo. The second exhibit has a more open feel with a slide that connects the, the first two otter exhibits. The third exhibit has a glass paneled view that showcases the otter den and even a cave with a small bubble dome that allows you to look inside the otter's habitat. Of the three otter exhibits, the first one is my favorite due to its unique underwater viewing area where you can watch the otters swimming and playing in the water together. Leaving the otter exhibits, you will pass an outdoor classroom before making your way to the home of the black vulture. This species is most common in Alabama, but can also be found in Texas, Arkansas, and New Jersey. Like other members of this species, the black vulture is a scavenger, meaning that it feeds on dead decaying meat left behind by other predators. Soon, the black vulture will be getting a new home along with the coyotes and a bobcat in an exhibit called Cougar Crossing. I look forward to showcasing this new area when it opens. Continuing along the path, the next bird you will see is the wild turkey. A wild turkey has approximately 5,000 pet feathers and can weigh as much as 25 pounds, making them one of the largest species of flying bird in the world. Just like a primate, wild turkeys can see in color and have excellent daytime vision. Wild turkeys are known for their distinct gobble, which you are listening right now.
Male turkeys make this call in order to announce their presence to other wild turkeys in the area and stake their territory. Gobble noises often lead to squabbles or full-on fights between turkeys, which I had personally witnessed at this exhibit on a previous visit. And next up on the path, we enter the Black Bear Trail, a 2014 expansion of the Alabama Wilds. The zoo is currently home to two black bears who are sisters named Sassy and Betty. Surprisingly, they have something in common with the Golden Eagles. They are both rescues. Sassy and Betty were rescued from Big Sky, Montana. They had been fed by humans there, and they had lost their natural fear of humans as a result, putting them in danger of being killed by predators or humans. Three attempts were made by the Montana Fish and Wildlife Service to release them back into the wild. Unfortunately, these attempts were all unsuccessful, and they were deemed unable to be rehabilitated. They came to the Birmingham Zoo in 2014, and a year later, they found their permanent home in the Alabama wilds. At the end of the Black Bear Trail is the home of the fox. One unique feature of this exhibit is that it hosts both a red fox and a gray fox, which I didn't see, who rotate throughout the year. Red foxes are very helpful in controlling the, dot in the population of small mammals, such as rodents. Gray foxes have an even more diverse diet in addition to feeding on small mammals. They consume reptiles, birds, and even eggs. While this may seem like the perfect finale, I can't leave without mentioning some farmyard friends. Connected to the Alabama wilds is the Alabama Barn that opened along with the Children's Zoo in 2005. This interactive exhibit allows you to, to view several different species of domesticated animals up close and even pet them. Just outside the barn is a coop for chickens. Domestic chickens are becoming more popular for new owners. However, it's, it is very important that you don't put more than one rooster in a coop with hens. If two roosters are in the same coop, they will fight to the death over who gets to be the head honcho. Inside the barn, there are goats, several different species of sheep, and a miniature donkey named Chaucer. Miniature donkeys are known to protect livestock from predators, so they're very useful on the farm. The barn has another feathered friend, the barn owl. As you exit the barn, you can either pet some of the sheep and goats in the corral, you can continue back to ride the carousel, or visit the rest of the Birmingham Zoo. Thank you for watching. For the next video, I need your help choosing which section of the zoo I will tour. Vote for your favorite in the comments below.